Welcome, everyone. Northeastern University is excited to sponsor LATAM Startups Conference this year, but I'm even more excited to introduce to you the next speaker. Maria Parish is a PhD researcher in AI and technology education at DCU Ireland. As an experienced and certified innovation manager for over 18 years, Maria has been sharing her experience in fields such as AI and data science, project management, and user experience design. Before co-founding Logical AI, Maria founded and worked for technology startups and was a consultant for multinational companies. Now, I happen to know that Maria is talented in many more areas beyond this, but today she will be presenting for you on Gen AI versus human intelligence. Who will win the race? Maria? Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? I think you can. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a wonderful honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, the whole team of LATAM that made this uh, wonderful event happen. Okay, so let's pump today's conference up a bit. We will be talking about the hottest uh, topic of the last uh, couple of months. Let's start with our presentation. Okay, let's meet. So you know a bit about myself already, but I will tell you a bit more. I'm in AI. I own a couple of AI startups. Um, that operate in Europe, that operate in the Middle East, and also here in Northern America. I've been in this business for more than seven years already. Um, I'm also famous for co-hosting and co-creating the largest community of data scientists in the world, which is right now 14 million strong, together with Google and together with Kaggle. I write books, I share my experience on AI. Uh, I'm also a PhD researcher, you know about that. Of course, in AI, everything is in AI. And when I have time, I teach students, I share my experience, I'm also invited as speaker. For example, I will be um, visiting New York this September to discuss in front of United Nations the situation that we are struggling with like, uh, right now with AI. So actually, we will be covering the same topic, uh, very similar topic today. So for me, uh, the biggest milestone of the last years was 30 November of 2022. Why? Because finally clients started asking me about AI. I didn't have to convince them that AI is good for them, is beneficial for their business. So a lot of things changed. So what is this date? This is the date of releasing chat GPT. And since then, you probably all of you heard about this uh, innovation and about AI. So. No, let's go back. Guys, can you put it on? AI, 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 yes. AI, generative AI, generative AI, generative AI, 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 uh, so yes, let's move on. We have uh, more to cover today. Yes, it was uh, the theme of the last six months, uh, but we, know, we knew that AI will be here to stay since 2019, for example. The Turing Award has given to be been given to also Canadians, Jeffrey Hinton and others. 2017, when three things happened. First thing, Canada is announcing their pan-Canadian strategy. This was the first AI strategy um, for the country across the globe and other countries followed. The same year, Google changes the strategy from information provider to AI, just AI and machine learning. And at the same time, the same year, we learn that the um, presidential election in the US in 2016 was strongly influenced by AI, which changed actually probably the outcome of those elections. But please do remember that AI is not a new invention. It was discovered in 40s and 50s, and um, the name for AI was coined in 1956 <laughs> during one of the conferences. So since then, we didn't have to the, the capability to, to deal with AI. Now, finally, we do, and the race is on. The race between humans and machines, between companies as well. So. I think you will all agree with me on three facts. The first one, Gen AI is powerful. Yes, it is. Gen AI is a long-awaited revolution, at least for me, but I think uh, that for many, many companies across the globe as well. And Gen AI creates, right? So what Gen AI creates? It creates text. Most of you probably used it uh, in the form of ChatGPT. Gen AI creates videos. 
uh, Gen AI creates pictures. By the way, you probably recognize this picture. It was released a month ago. It's a fake, it's a fake picture of a bombing attack on Pentagon. If you look at the picture, you will know that there's like, you know, it's obvious that it's, it's Gen um, um, created, but still the stock exchange went down significantly. So we react to this kind of stuff. The same, uh, Gen AI creates voice, it generates music, it generates 3D. Later on, we just can just click and print it. Uh, it generates websites for you. The only thing you need to do is to type a little prompt, maybe not that little, but still, uh, it's quite easy to create your own websites, your own applications, and something very close to my heart, it can create code for us in almost any language, a coding language exists. So before we move on, let me share with you four facts that you need to know about Gen AI. I think you might find them insightful. The first fact is that per week, now we are getting 200 new AI releases, new AI systems. It gives us around 1,000 per month, and it's been going for the last six months. So you can imagine how the AI landscape looks right now. It's that thick, and it's uh, of course, it's not everything that we have on the table, so many people feel confused. Fact number two, AI follows us. It doesn't follow us in the sense that, <laughs> you know, it follows us on social media. No, 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 it's very literate. So it follows our guidelines. Mm, some of you might remember uh, the paperclip dilemma, which was the thought experiment conducted in Europe. And I, I was at the time asked to generate as many paper clips as possible. What did, did we, uh, what did it do? At one point, the, it decided that um, it can use humans, us, to make more paper clips. When it was given a direct instructions that you can't heal humans, by the way. Uh, what it did, it turned into forests and it wanted to use uh, Amazonia to create more paper clips. So it's very, very literate and will follow your instructions. So if your instructions are smart, you will get a smart gen AI and uh, AI solutions. If not, you will get artificial stupidity. There is also a name for that, right? So remember, it follows us. We do not follow a computer. Fact number three, most gen AI it's either open source or it's cheap or it's cheap-ish. Basically, it's affordable. It means that all of us can use it for our own good and for our own development. And this is the outcome of the race that is on between the large companies like Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, Apple, Nvidia, Meta, and many, many more. And please do remember, not only these companies are using AI for good and for our benefit. Those powerful, powerful LLMs, powerful solutions were given in partnership to many companies like, for example, Adobe. Adobe had one month to adapt to what Bard gave them, and this is the outcome. Look at this picture. This is, this is just simply amazing what you could do with simple, simple, simple stuff, but you can do it as well. Fact number four, NLP is a new coding language. What does it mean? Finally, and this is the best information and I'm giving you today, you don't need coding to do the stuff that you are seeing on the picture. Finally, we are using our own language, natural language, human language, to, com to communicate with computers. Before that, you needed a coding language for the computer to understand you. Now you don't need it anymore. You need, uh, you need just, your own, just your own language. And uh, yeah, all of that would be absolutely brilliant and wonderful if, there is one if, that we still have Paleolithic emotions and minds, medieval institutions and godlike technologies. Technologies are growing extremely fast and we are not somehow adapted to it properly. So I'm often being asked how the, the world, the new world will look like. In my opinion, the weakest link in this world are humans, are us, not computers, not machines anymore. And uh, sorry to say, there is no AI, uh, gen AI for humans, at least not yet, right? But if you've seen uh, Star Wars, you know that this might be possible in the future. So my question I'll ask you is not what do we do with computers and what do we do with AI, but what do we do with humans? Because somehow we can't catch up. So 
In front of us, there is epochal transition. We need to transform 400 million, up to 500 million people across the globe towards data-oriented positions. And no one, sorry to say, no one knows how this should be done. Uh, but there is, this is in front of us. With all the information that I've given you, we are somehow being informed by media how awful our situation is. We are being threatened. For example, take a look at that. 80% of human careers will disappear. Sam Altman says AI poses a risk, a risk of extinction. Jeffrey Hinton says AI can misinformate us. The same with Elon Musk saying it can destroy our whole civilization. Uh, and IBM, so companies are adding to this picture and saying that, for example, IBM declared that they will stop hiring people for the jobs that can be automated and they said that they will re release additional 8,000 people due to automation. So I do not, I'm not, let me say, surprised by the outcome of that. Uh, there was an open letter that was announced uh, three months ago to stop the development of AI for six months. Of course, we knew that from the beginning this was very unrealistic because, for example, maybe US and Canada would stop, but what about China? What about other AI powers? Would they stop? Probably not. But uh, this gives you a sense what's going on among people, among humans. Uh, Sam Altman now is proposing regulations in front of, standing in front of uh, the Congress, the US Congress, and proposing um, um, adding licensing to, uh, to AI. Of course, this is disputable, but it gives you the trend of what's going on. Majority of people look like that. By the way, Iga Świątek, uh, uh, first in WTA, she's Polish. Uh, that's why I'm putting her, <laughs> I'm using her GIFs. Uh, majority of people are asking, come on, what do I do? Uh, what the situation is awful to me. So maybe I will show you because I strongly believe that this is amazing opportunity. I'm very positive about AI because I've been a researcher and I'm an er entrepreneur in AI for so many years. I know its powers, I know its uh, mishaps, but I still think that it can help us a lot. 85% of people declare that they hate their jobs. So this is amazing opportunity. On one hand, people don't like their jobs. On the other, we have so many new opportunities. We have new jobs, new positions, new markets open for us. And just look at that, just these 50 career jobs, they usually require coding, but there are like many, many new positions that do not require that. You can be an AI manager, uh, AI ethicist, so many people are needed for that. I'm bringing to you and showing to you just nine new positions, completely new positions. They are not available on the job market yet. There are no names for that, except maybe from, uh, for uh, prompt engineer. So many, many more people will be needed for AI to create it. So uh, coming back to the question and answering them in a moment, I will just you know, give you a hint that it's easier for you, for all of you, to transform yourself towards AI by adding data science and AI to your position. It takes, even with coding, it takes one to two years and learning business I mean, like teaching data scientists business, it takes up to five years, so you can do your math. And in my opinion, the, the, the most important thing that you should think about after this presentation is which pill would you, will you take? Just as in Matrix, will you take the red pill and enter the AI world or the blue pill and say, no, 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 I will wait, I will just you know, adapt to what will happen. In my opinion, the second option is super, super dangerous because you are trusting that someone will build the AI world, the future AI world for you, and you will feel comfortable in this world. In my opinion, the choice is kind of obvious because I would like to live in a safe world, ethical world that I have some influence on. So I say, let your experience work on your behalf. You can do it, and all of you, knowing what you know already and adding this component of AI, can become super powerful. So answering the question, the first question that was put here on the screen, who wins the race? And I say, AI-empowered people of tomorrow will win the race, not computers, not humans of today, but humans of the future. So people empowered with AI, with the trampoline of AI. And have a look at that. Nearly half of Fortune 500 companies was created during times of economic stress. 
So this is amazing opportunity. There is not, and, and right now, nothing is set in stone. You can create your own rules, you can create your own companies. The only things that are needed are three things, and I'm pretty sure that majority of you have them. First, computer with internet. If you don't have it even on you right now, you have it at home, right? True, yeah, I can see nodding. Second, even better, do you have problems? I bet you have thousands of them, right? Yeah, you need problems. So let's make money out of them. Let's monetize them. Let's automate them and create solutions that people will love. Because m if you have the problem, probably uh, thousands of other people uh, do have them as well. And the last thing, last but not least, is of course a bit of AI knowledge. But please do remember, I already told you that for a majority of stuff, you don't need coding anymore. You can become an AI expert, you can start an AI company, you can build your own solution, you can adapt existing products to your company, you can become a representative of the newly created companies. Remember, 1,000 new solutions per month, there will be a lot of things to sell on the market. Train systems, you can uh, transform companies, you can transform people, you can teach, you can become a researcher, you can start your own data business. By the way, this is a great business of the future. Um, and you can do whatever you want, but there is one but. One but. You need to transform yourself towards AI. Right now, this is the situation that I observe. There comes a new technology and it somehow surprises us. Oh my God, there is ChatGPT. By the way, between you and me, us researchers and us uh, AI uh, practitioners, we knew for around one year and a half that a chat, something like ChatGPT will appear. We knew that, but majority of people were surprised. Just like that. Uh, the second step is when you are like, you know, you know already something and you try out, maybe not every time you will succeed, but it's a good step. It's absolutely normal. And what I wish for you, for all of you, is to not being surprised by the fish it's to be a fisherman or to be a fisherwoman, to have this AI under your control. Imagine the situation that you are waiting for the new fish to come and you catch it instead of, you know, being slapped. Um, and I can guarantee you that chat GPT and Gen AI is just one trend. There are dozens of others and they will surprise you in six months, in 12 months, in 18 months, and probably in next years as well. So there is no point in waiting in my opinion and the only option that you might have is to enter the AI world. If you want, first of all, to transform the world you will be living in and your family will live in, but most of all have fun. This is fun. Don't, uh, um, please don't, uh, do, 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 not, do not underestimate the power of AI in terms of its powerfulness, but also in a uh, in super fun way, you can create the world of your future. So I hope that you, all of you, will become AI-empowered people. Each of you will become AI-empowered person. This is as easy as it sounds, seriously, I guarantee you. And I close my presentation with just one statement. Let AI power be with you because using the analogy from Star Wars, when you probably remember, if you've seen it as a child or as a teen, you know that AI and power is everywhere, just as AI is present everywhere. And the power is cheap, is available, is easy. And you know, it's just inviting you to AI world. So let AI power be with you. Thank you so much for today's presentation. for questions yeah okay so questions during coffee break see you later <laughs>